Greetings and salutations, my dearest friends. My name is Samantha, and welcome to a little series I'm going to be calling 100 Days, 100 Books, where I am continuously giving recommendations of some of my favorite books. Hello, how are you? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today is the start of a very ambitious project that I'm starting here on my channel. So, I love the bookish space, I love the bookish community, it's one of my favorite things ever. I genuinely don't even really watch like TV shows, I'm constantly watching YouTube videos, listening to podcasts, listening to audiobooks, just anything like in the bookish realm. And I really do love all types of videos, I love casual reading vlogs, I love tags, all types of different stuff. But the reason I started my channel in particular and why I really started to make videos and kind of like lean into the bookish space was for the book recommendations. I love talking about my favorite books. I could talk about my favorite books all day, every day, if someone was willing to listen to that. I also love getting recommendations from other people or even like the algorithm, like that section on Kindle Unlimited where it says like books you may like. I feel like I find my most favorite books in that section alone. Sometimes like when I'm scrolling through, especially on like Instagram or book talk, and I'm kind of like scrolling through, it's a lot of bookish drama, a lot of fun, trendy sounds, cute aesthetic videos, which I love. Not complaining about that at all. Absolutely love those types of videos. But sometimes I am here just because I want a good book recommendation. I'm doing this little challenge for myself and it's a project called 100 Days, 100 Books, where every single day for 100 days, I am giving you guys one recommendation of my absolute favorite book of all time. I feel like this is really fun because I do read a variety of genres. I read cozy mysteries, fantasies, romances, a little bit of everything. So I have a lot of favorite books, a lot of five stars that maybe I haven't talked about on my socials before. So I originally started doing this on TikTok and then I started posting the videos on Instagram and then it kind of evolved into graphics and then I was like, well, what about YouTube? So now it's a whole project on all platforms and that's fine because I feel like different people like different forms of content. So what I'm going to be doing is every day on TikTok and Instagram, I'm posting a short video, a minute and 30 seconds, because that's as long as Instagram gives me right now. They need to, they need to get the 10 minute feature like TikTok, but I'm going to take a minute and 30 seconds, quickly explain one of my favorite books, post it. I will also have a corresponding graphic on my socials. So if you're someone who just really wants to like quickly get a book recommendation every day, you can find it there. And then for my longer form content here on YouTube, I'm going to be posting a video once a week where I will be recommending five to seven books really quickly. Kind of like a wrap up of the favorites that I recommended throughout the week. Hopefully that makes sense. I know it's quite a project, but I definitely thrive off of creative projects like this. I've definitely been feeling in a slump, not only like a reading slump, but just like in life feeling a lack of purpose and excitement over things. And sometimes having a project to like get up every day, do my makeup and chat with you guys really helps me stay motivated and focused. So that is what we're doing. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. You'll still, um, you will still see all of my other videos. Um, I will still be uploading and doing all my other things. This is just like a fun side project for me. Videos will not be this long every single week. I just needed to explain the concept of a hundred days, a hundred books. If anyone wants to embark on this ridiculous challenge with me, feel freaking free, okay? I want you guys to give recommendations as well. But yeah, you can follow me on all platforms at Books with Samantha. Same username, Books with Samantha, on Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. If you want to follow me on this journey, just might vary throughout the week in the sense that I might film them as I'm recommending them. I might do like a vlog style or I'll do like a sit down video like this. I did vlog just a little bit as I was coming up with this idea, making the graphics, picking out the books. So I'll go ahead and put that footage here and then we will chat about my recommendations for the week. Of course, I have books all over the floor and all over, like, my vanity because I was filming the recommendations. My room's a mess. I need to clean this up ASAP. I don't even know what day it is, but I have to pick out my next book rec. And honestly, I don't know. I'm looking on my other bookshelf to get some inspiration. Immediately, I'm kind of, like, drawn to the Love Light Farm series because this is one of my favorite series of all time. I actually have a tattoo for every book 
in the series except the last one because that's the newest one that I haven't read yet. I have a tattoo right here on my arm. It says Find Your Happy, which is from the second book, and then a strawberry, which is from the third book. And I have a little pine tree on my finger, which is for the first book. But I talk about this series a lot, but it's my favorite. And I feel like the first week I want to talk about like my top, top, top favorites, like the ones that like define my reading taste and also the ones I have tattoos for. I also kind of want to pick books that I think will generally be really liked since it's the first week of the series and I kind of want everyone to know I have elite book taste so they keep watching um and then like day 50 I can hit them with the crazy Omegaverse and fanfic recommendations. I can get into the more weird ones. <laughs> uh but I don't know if I want to recommend the first book because it's not Christmas right now even though you don't have to read this during Christmas. I kind of want to recommend the second book. I don't know if it's a good idea to recommend a second in a series, but you can read this as a standalone. This is what my heart is telling me, but I'm also wearing strawberries right now as I normally am and Mixed Signals has strawberries on the cover. So that kind of matches. I don't know. Okay, obviously we're gonna be recommending one of the books from the series. I just need to figure out which. They're also good, I've given them all five stars. The first book, Love Light Farms, has my favorite trope, Friends to Lovers. The second book has my favorite heroine, Evelyn. I feel like I relate to her so much and I just love her to pieces. And then the third book, Mixed Signals, has my favorite hero. Our hero, Caleb, in this book is book boyfriend to the max. Like he is so zaddy but also very baby girl at the same time. And I really love him. So like, I love each book for different reasons, you know? But then I also really need to read Business Casual, which I'm putting off because I know it's gonna be favorite and I just don't want the series to end. Anyways, I'll figure it out. I kinda wanna reread Love Light Farms. I might do that after I film this video. Just, just for the vibes. Only day five and I'm already regretting this decision and this project. <laughs> As always, when I start a new project, I greatly underestimate the work behind it. Like, I love the concept and I love the concept. <laughs> Consecutive days of actually filming and doing my makeup. It's a lot, babe. And I'm pretty sure my shirt is on backwards. Cool. Kayla, is it on backwards? I don't know. There's not a tag. All right. We'll leave it. Who cares? Whenever I'm at a book signing or I have a makeup on for a long period of time, I always get asked what setting spray I use. Recently, I have been loving the Shop Miss A setting spray. This is the Shop Miss A AOA Studios Flawless Matte Setting Spray. It also comes with a priming spray as well. So I put this on before my makeup, after my skincare, and then I put this on after my makeup, and it locks it in it locks it in I also like the eyeshadow that i'm wearing today i'm wearing the adriana nicole cosmetics eyeshadow in the shade goddess this is a brand that reeled me in on tiktok shop and i love their eyeshadow so much i have one of their eyeshadow palettes that has like nine shades i think and i love it but i got this one as a single shade it's a really pretty gold which normally i don't wear gold often but I like this one. I'm just wasting time. I actually need to film today's recommendation. And I don't know, I don't know what we're gonna pick. I feel like we should do a cozy mystery. My last couple recommendations were romances. I did a contemporary sports romance and two paranormal romances. So I feel like now maybe we should switch gears. Let's look at our cozy mystery section and see what we're gonna pick. Welcome to my shelves. This last shelf right here is where I have most of my cozy mysteries. Of course, my mind is like immediately drawn to an Ellie Alexander book because I love her so much. I just read this one. I gave it five stars. So that's why it's kind of like on my brain. I could also recommend a Bake Shop mystery book. But I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Oh my goodness. Virginia Lau. I also love her cookie cutter shop mystery series. I mean, we have many days in this little project, so we have time to recommend all of them. But what should we do today? I like this one because it kind of matches my outfit. I think I'm going to do an Ellie Alexander book because it is the first week. I want to recommend like some of my favorites. So now I just need to pick which Ellie Alexander book I want to recommend because she has a couple different series. All right, let's hop into the recommendations. I have seven books to talk about and a variety of genres. I have some paranormal romances, a cozy mystery, a sports romance, a little bit of everything. So for the first day, I wanted to start off really strong and talk about one of my favorite books by one of my favorite authors, and that is In This Iron Ground by Marina Vavankos. 
if I had to pick an all-time favorite author, I really do think it would be Marina Vivancos because I have read her entire backlist and given the majority of her books five stars. She predominantly writes on Kindle Unlimited and her books are so sweepingly romantic but they're also deeply emotional because they have amazing mental health rep and they're all queer as well. This is a male-male romance but it mainly follows the story of Damien who at a young age lost both of his parents and has been kind of bounced around between different orphanages and homes. At the start of the book he is placed in a home that he does not feel safe in. They are quite abusive so he decides to run away and find solace in the woods. When he's running in the woods this is where he finds the Salgado pack. The Salgado pack is a pack of werewolves and typically humans do not know of their existence. When they meet Damien they immediately feel drawn to him. He has such a special connection with everyone in the pack. This has a huge found family trope but he particularly has a connection with the eldest brother Hakan. This is a slow burn friends to lovers romance. It does take a little bit for the romance to really kick in because it really is following Damien's like emotional journey as he is just learning to love himself, learning to be more confident, his journey with mental health. I just think it is so beautifully written. This is the first book in the duology. The second one is called All That Has Flown Beyond. You can technically read them as standalones but I think they're just so perfect together as well. The second one is even more emotional so make sure to check out the trigger warnings if you want to pick it up. For the second day I decided to recommend a newer release and that is Playbook by Rebecca Genshack. This is technically the second book in the Holland Brothers series but absolutely can be read as a standalone. It is a contemporary sports romance. Those are heroine London who actually starts to get our hero's fan mail. Our hero is a professional football player and somehow she mistakenly gets a lot of his fan mail. I'm talking about envelopes with kisses on them, love letters, Banthes. And at first she is incredibly annoyed but when she meets him for the first time he starts to write letters to her so it's kind of like a cute little pen pal situation. Their relationship evolves into a fake dating scenario because our heroine has to impress her family and I just love this one so freaking much. It has a grumpy sunshine pairing where the heroine is the grumpy one and that is probably one of my favorite tropes ever. I just really enjoy Rebecca Genshack's writing. It's romantic, it's sweet. The first book is also really good. It's called Burnout. It's an opposites attract romance between a professional Olympic gymnast and a motocross player loved this one as well so highly recommend this series if you're looking for a sports romance series to pick up. I love how I was like sneaking in more book recommendations like I recommended one book and then I'm like oh if you like this also read this like relax Sam it's only supposed to be one book a day. Day three I kind of wanted to switch it up since I had already recommended two romances back to back so I decided to reach into the archive and pick one of my favorite books of all time and that is A Dowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson. I would consider this like a gothic horror fiction book. It is told in the perspective of our heroine Lady Constanza who is essentially known as one of Dracula's first consorts. It follows her journey as she is turned into a vampire by Dracula and her relationship with him. At times it is incredibly romantic but their relationship definitely twists into something darker and more abusive and manipulative. Of the story Dracula also gets other consorts and you see our heroine's relationship with them as well as she's kind of like finding solace with them. I feel like this is a book that really transcends genres because it has this gothic undertone and at times is incredibly romantic but also very horrifying and gory and I just loved it. Because it's told in almost like these letter diaries you really feel like you are reading inserts of someone's like real life and I am vampire obsessed. You guys know this. Dracula was one of the very first books that I read where I feel like it made me a reader. I was obsessed when I was reading it. And after that I became so obsessed with vampires that I read any vampire literature you could think of. I was so obsessed that I even got a little bat tattoo on my arm for Dracula. So I just think this is like perfect okay this book to me is everything it almost reads as a classic like I feel like this should be required reading you know that's how much I love it I mean everything I'm recommending is good because it's all of my favorites but you know I'm trying to only recommend five stars I've been reading a long time so I have a lot of five stars to recommend okay on day four I decided to go back to romance I had another paranormal romance that I really wanted to recommend and that is Perfectly Imperfect Pixie by MJ May this is the first in the Perfect Pixie series the entire series is so 
criminally underrated with the first book having less than 4,000 ratings on Goodreads and I just don't understand it. Not only is the series incredibly romantic but it's also very unique. The magic system, the world building, even like the pairings are very unique in like a paranormal world. One of the books has a zombie and a fairy together. Another one has like a pixie and a vampire. I just... I love it. I eat this whole series up. First book is such a good start to the series and you do have to read the series in order because there's an overarching plot. Perfectly Imperfect Pixie is a male-male romance between a werewolf shifter and a pixie. It starts off by following our main hero Philodendron who is a home and hearth pixie. His entire life he has definitely been judged for his appearance because pixies are known to be quite dainty and small and docile and he is six feet tall muscular and everyone has always judged him for the way that he looks and he has really struggled to get a job because of that this is where our other hero comes in cedric is an alpha werewolf who has recently become the primary guardian for his niece and nephew his brother and his brother's wife were tragically killed so he is left to watch over his niece and nephew however it becomes a little bit of a problem because their grandfather is trying trying to take custody rights away from him which is very problematic because the grandfather is a dangerous volatile alpha werewolf not a good guy so he definitely needs to protect his family and in doing that he needs a home and hearth pixie so that is where phil comes in to take care of the house take care of the kids and it follows their romance has a found family and a faded mates trope which is some of my favorite tropes ever honestly this whole series has those two tropes which i think is why i like it so much but it's so underrated and it's so romantic and i just need everyone to read it so pick up the perfect pixie series it's on kindle limited you could just binge all of them because you'll fall in love with the characters like i have all right for day five i had another contemporary romance that i recommended and this is another one of my favorites and that is in the weeds by bk borison this is technically the second book in the love light series but can be read out of order this book follows evelyn and beckett who actually met a couple years ago on a business trip and on that trip they had a very steamy night together when they first met each other there was an instant chemistry and they ended up spending the weekend together doing some fun crazy things however it was a one night stand neither of them really expected to see each other again after that until our heroine Evelyn ends up going to a small town she is a social media influencer that really focuses on small businesses so she goes to the small town to feature a tree farm there and that is where she sees Beckett again he works at this tree farm in this small town heroine is at a place in her life where she is really struggling to find her happiness she is struggling to find her purpose in life which i feel like a lot of people can relate to and the last time she remembered being truly happy and content was when she was at lovelight farms so she decides to move there temporarily to kind of find herself again and it follows her second chance romance with beckett i think this book is so incredibly special because like just based on the cover and the premise it's a cute small town romance second chance romance cutesy right it's also very emotional. It has such amazing mental health representation in here and our hero is also on the spectrum so it has amazing representation with that as well. I think that BK Borison really has mastered the ability to write something that's romantic and sweet but also very emotional and that is kind of like the niche that I love and I'm drawn to if you can't tell by my previous recommendations. I want to connect to the characters. I want to feel all the feels and this book made me feel all the feels um i remember just absolutely sobbing reading this book i related to the heroine in this book so much like it makes me want to tear up just thinking about it and yeah this whole series is absolutely lovely so highly recommend this one okay on day six i decided to switch up genres again since i had recommended a couple romances back to back and i decided to recommend a cozy mystery this cozy mystery i've talked about plenty of times on my channel and that is meet your baker by ellie alexander i know that some of these books i read a while ago and i've been talking about a lot on my channel but they're my favorites and i really wanted to start this 
week strong because it was the first week of this challenge i feel like all the books mentioned really sum up my reading taste so anyways meet your baker is the first book in the bake shop mystery series it is a baking cozy it follows our heroine jules who is a world-renowned pastry chef on a cruise line she's having some difficulties in her marriage so she decides to head back to her hometown of ashland oregon the town is really known for their shakespeare theater and their shakespeare festivals all the small businesses in this town are kind of themed around Shakespeare literature. Our heroine's family owns a bake shop so she decides to go back home to help her mother with their family bake shop and when she gets there bum 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 there's a murder a murder darling so she needs to figure out what's going on. This series is very long it has 18 books in the series and I have read every single one and I have enjoyed every single one. Ellie Alexander is the cozy mystery queen okay complete master of her craft the way she plots out her mystery plot lines and her descriptions of the town feel so real you will absolutely fall in love with her writing style and also the set of characters you can technically read cozy mysteries like outside of order but i really love the whole series as a whole because you get to follow all of the side characters and their life and it's just so fun and cozy as the genre suggests. And then we got to day seven. So for the last recommendation for the week, sorry, I know this was a chatty video. In the future, I'll try to condense it. But for my last recommendation, I wanted to talk about another one of my favorites, and that is Serpentine Valentine by Gianna Darling. I guess this could be considered a new release because it was released this year in February, but I just constantly think about it and it has quickly become not only my whole personality, but also just like one of my favorite books in general. Like I said, it's a dark academia sapphic romance with a Medusa retelling. It follows our heroine Lex, who at the beginning of the book is taken advantage of by one of her college professors. What makes the situation even worse is that when the college administration finds out about it, they try to cover it up. The professor of the university was a mentor to her and someone that she really thought was a friend and a, again, someone that she could trust. Trust. instead of protecting her the president of the university decides to protect the professor and just cover it all up the book picks up again a couple months later our heroine is back to school and she's back with a vengeance she wants revenge against the man that hurt her but also revenge against the institution that covered it up and in doing that that is where she meets our other heroine luna luna is the daughter of the president of the university so it has a little bit of an enemy lovers revenge plot to it this book is everything it is dark and I definitely would recommend checking out the trigger warnings because it has a Medusa retelling to it. There are a lot of nods and references to Greek mythology, which I love. Uh, but I also think like if you're a classic lit girly, you will love this book as well because the writing style is so lyrical and beautiful to read. I feel like as a whole, it really embodies the epitome of female rage. And I feel like a lot of people could relate to it. I related to this really heavily because of the way it describes like the general queer experience. It has a huge by awakening trope that I felt so seen as I was reading it. And yeah, it honestly has become such a special, special book to me. Like I can't even describe the pure joy I felt reading it but it also was very emotional like when I was crying it felt very cathartic if that makes sense so it tugs on my heartstrings it really does but I think a lot of people would genuinely enjoy this book if you are someone who loves dark academia or sapphic romances highly recommend Serpentine Valentine by Gianna Darling. Those are my seven recommendations for the week and in my little project of 100 Days 100 Books. I will create a playlist with all of my recommendations that I will be doing. Make sure to follow me on TikTok and Instagram if you want to see my recommendations every single my light died. No! Back. My light is back as well. Uh, if you want to see my daily updates, make sure to follow me on my socials. But anyways, I know this was a long video because I was explaining the concept, but I hope you guys will stay with me during this series. If you stayed this long and you enjoyed the video, leave me an emoji. There is a hundred emoji, like the hundred number. 100 days 100 books leave that emoji down below if you stayed this long so i know we're bookish besties but also if you are excited for this series as always thank you for taking time out of your day to spend time with me it means the world to me i hope you guys are all staying happy and healthy and i will see you in my next video bye